I will present some insights on uh, protection strategies for multi-terminal HVDC grids, which is considered uh, the cornerstone for massive uh, clean energy, energy integration through offshore and offshore HVDC transmission. So let's begin. I propose you the following contents for this presentation. First section will be about the context and motivation. So we, I will discuss the role of multi-terminal HVDC for massive uh, renewable energy integration, AC and DC constraints for the protection design and the main protection design procedure. The next section will be about HVDC grid protection solutions where we will delve into the DC grid protection strategies and technologies. We will then explore an innovative uh, superconducting solution for uh, DC protection, including characteristics of a superconducting fault current limiter and its application on the protection. And then I will summarize the key points discussed in the presentation, followed by the Q&A session. So uh, why, why do I speak uh, about this today? So HVDC projects are on the rise are all around the world. So with a particular focus in, in Asia maybe, and uh, but also now in Europe and soon maybe in the United States. So uh, we're envisioning a future where the entire world is connected for wider power sharing and lower economic and environmental costs of energy. So that's what uh, this GE backbone grid shows. So now the use of bipolar converters uh, with a power capacity of two gigawatt is becoming the norm. These converters are used to connect with wind farms and interconnect across uh, countries, regions, and continents. So we're now talking uh, about increasing the number of terminals and power and interconnecting the whole system in what we call a multi-terminal HPDC system. But uh, since the power increases, uh, also increase the the risk of a fault leading to a potential sudden loss of two, four, six gigawatts or more. So with increasing scale and complexity of these projects, we must consider the risk of widespread uh, blackouts. The MTDC system is connected to the alternating current system as well. So the stability of both systems is crucial uh, and currently grid codes specify rules to maintain stability of AC networks, but these rules are limited to each country. So it is important to understand what are these new constraints to a widespread MTDC system um, and together better uh, have a better knowledge on the DC side security constraints as well. So all of this is necessary for a good design of, of the protection strategies. So developing new codes for multi-terminal uh, high voltage uh, direct current, which we now call MTDC, it is a difficult task due to the lack of experience and codes for this new technology. One of the major challenges is that the one size fits all approach cannot be used to determine the power stability limits in cross country MTDC systems. So we need to uh, address this uh, problem, uh, these challenges. So we need a lot of collaboration. So uh, we need uh, to do a lot of analysis and studies of, of uh, cross AC and DC stability under different fault conditions, use uh, realistic scenarios like the one we saw before NSWPH is a good example, and uh, don't do studies to determine uh, the new power stability limits. Um, so this is massive amounts of work and knowledge uh, that will be required to, to analyze all this. Thus, the collaboration and sharing experiences from real projects is, is crucial as well. Now, to ensure reliable NTDC projects, um, we need a robust protection. So one challenge is the maturity of DC circuit breakers, for example. Uh, since uh, high in the, the DC current uh, doesn't cross through zero and uh, it, it reaches can reach up to high uh, peak values in a multi-terminal system. So uh, we need to think about the DC protection from the algorithm to the DCCB and, and after it. Another challenge is interoperability issues among different converters, but also among different protection equipment and strategies. And to overcome these challenges, uh, we need to assess the DC protection layout, the equipment that is necessary, including uh, what is the most cost-effective solution, what is, the, uh, what is feasible, 
and then what are the performances of the different solutions we have using EMT simulation, for example, which uh, stands for electromagnetic transient simulation. So it is time to increase the maturity of DC technology for uh, MTDC protection to ensure uh, reliable projects to come. So I will go now go no, no go deeper into this subject. So I may continue. So how to design uh, such uh, protection for MTDC systems? So I think first I need to uh, explain what is uh, a protection strategy for HVDC. Uh, so when a fault occurs in an HVDC system, the first step is to, is to clear the fault. So this is done through the use of uh, IE intelligent electronic devices called IEDs and DC breakers. This process is called the fault creating strategy. And once the fault has been cleared, it is important also to restore the grid voltage and power. So this is the role of the MTDC converters through coordination and recovery actions. And uh, finally, the let's say after the fault, we, we find the new operating condition with one element less, which was the faulty element that has been now isolated. So the, the grid protection strategy encompasses both fault clearing and recovery actions and is defined uh, by sequences and algorithms that are run in relays. The MTDC protection strategy can be influenced by various factors such as the system architecture, the presence of cables or overhead lines, the system grounding, the MTDC grid size, and more. So the choice of a protection strategy also influences the choice of a certain technologies such as sensors, switching equipment, and the communications that are needed in, in this strategy. Uh, maybe put on the pointer, something useful. So um, protection strategies uh, are critical uh, to ensure reliable and stable operations. Uh, we participated in promotion project back in, since 2016, I think. Uh, if I remember well, and there we proposed or we came out with the three categories of protection strategy. So the first one is the full selective strategies, uh, which divides the grid into single, uh, let's say, protection zones uh, around the lines. Each one of the lines is protected, is a separate zone. And this strategy, let's say, minimizes the impact of the faults to the rest of the system, but it has also the highest cost of implementation. Then the partially selective strategies divides the grid into a few protection zones with firewall breakers installed at the connections, and it prevents the faults to from one zone to prepare to the other zones. So it starts to become less costly and have more impact in the system as well. And finally, the non-selective strategies that treat the entire grid as a protection zone. It eliminates the fault current uh, without selectivity at, the, at, at first. And uh, let's say the faulty line is then identified and, and isolated and the grid is restored. So the choice of the protection strategy will depend on the size of the network. And uh, this, let's say we need to perform adequacy and security studies to uh, using EMT simulations as well to assess which one is best for a, a specific project. Um, I also need to speak about uh, MTDC uh, protection technology. So first we had the strategies. Now we need to talk, we need to know that there are algorithms that will implement cert cert certain codes to uh, and say in a way that respect these strategies. So these algorithms can today, those we know are derivative algorithms based on the, the rate of change of current or voltage. Also, there are some communication based ones, some based on transient wave analysis and model based analysis. So the choice of this algorithm depends on the fault distance, fault resistance and other system characteristics because it will impact the system and each algorithm is evaluated in terms of uh, the capability to detect faults inside the protection zone, which is known as dependability, and ignore those outside of the zone, which is known as uh, security. 
So assessing security and dependability requires covering a wide range of uh, network topologies and operational scenarios. So we need to build knowledge and propose effective methods to evaluate these algorithms. Another crucial, crucial aspect is the use of uh, fault separation devices, such as hybrid or mechanical DC breakers for quick and safe uh, fault interruption. And uh, additionally, um, fault limitation devices, such as DC reactors and superconducting uh, fault current limiters which can be used to limit the impact of faults and uh, support the identification of uh, the faulty line. So it is important to note that these technologies must meet uh, specific technical requirements that are uh, the outputs of, uh, let's say, TSO's design, pre-design studies and bird vendors design studies, such as rated voltages, currents, limitation, and interruption times, maximum energy dissipation, etc. So there is a lot of things to design and to think about there. We have come up with a method to assess the different strategies and and the pre-design from a cost, let's say, or techno-economic analysis point of view. So to determine the best protection or compare them. So this is a heuristic method. It consists on, on first selecting a strategy, then sizing the system in an optimal way to respect the constraints, and, and finally comparing the costs. Uh, just as an example, uh, we'll not get into details on the, on the process, but we can calculate uh, or compare the three different strategies. For example, here, I took a, we took full selective one as a base case using a hybrid DC breaker. And uh, we come up with this kind of uh, um, charts in which we compare, uh, we see in gray the reference solution and in comparison, the non-selective strategy that is uh, uh, in orange, which shows to be a cheaper solution. But, uh, sorry, there's a mistake. So the, the cost is in, in, the, in, the, in the right side here. Hmm. So the system uh, said, the non-selective one is the cheapest, but it demands also, uh, it, it, it absorbs less energy. And, and, and let's say that uh, we need to, the TSO or the one who requires the DC breaker must be careful considering this solution since it, it must uh, check at the allowed active power restoration time since it is the biggest one for the, for the non-selective one. But we can also see that there is a, a trade-off using semi-selective strategies, which are not that expensive as well and reduces the active power in restoration time. So uh, it is crucial to identify the right moment to start thinking about, about protection in, in multi-terminal HDDC project. So uh, I would say that the main driver behind this is to better integrate a renewable and improve uh, overall power system. So TSOs, they play a role in determining the feasibility of these systems through R&D studies supported by R&D researchers and de defining the functional requirements and, and right architectures, including, uh, let's say, uh, the protection strategy. So the predefined, the pre-designed stage is, is vital and it allows uh, for the creation of preliminary technical uh, specifications for the tendering process. And this enables uh, vendors to then uh, design the system in detail, optimizing each aspect for uh, an improved operation. This is also where innovation can play a role as uh, vendors, researchers, and innovators come together to find solutions uh, when current technology falls short uh, of TSO's needs, needs. So uh, protection design is an aspect to keep in mind during the whole uh, project, preliminary project phases before engineering. So this is the end of the second part. Okay, now uh, for the next part of the presentation, I will focus on the innovative solution for MTDC system protection. So uh, I'm gonna talk about superconductors, actually the Superconductors is an emerging technology in power systems. 
uh, it can be a game changer for a power system. The um, a superconductor is a material that has uh, have uh, has a unique property. They are uh, lossless if the temperature, the current density, and magnetic field remain below certain critical values. So uh, superconductors have been used in various applications such as uh, medical imaging and particle accelerators. However, in power systems, uh, superconductors have enormous, let's say, potential as well. Uh, transmission cables uh, made of superconductors uh, can transmit more power at lower voltages, which is a major advantage in the transmission of uh, renewable energy, for example. And you can also store uh, magnetic energy uh, using superconductors with uh, much more uh, efficient efficiency. So another crucial applica application now is the foil current limiting. So by exploiting the trans transition uh, to a resistive state during a fault, these devices can limit the impact of a fault in less than one millisecond, making them uh, really fast, ultra fast. And this can be applied to both AC and DC systems. So the operating temperature of a superconducting fault current limiter is 70K, which is equivalent uh, to minus 200 degree centigrade. So this is maintained by the liquid nitrogen bath. So uh, the superconductor is inside a cryogenic uh, container called the cryostat. But this is something that is widely used in various industries, uh, such as agriculture, pharma, pharmaceuticals, and chemistry. These cooling machines uh, have been adapted for using in superconducting limiters as well. They can also be accessible in offshore platforms if you consider a cardionic machine that can ensure local and autonomous production of liquid nitrogen uh, in place for first filling of the cryostat and the losses compensation. So additionally, um, they can be, uh, let's say, the principle of design of the superconducting limiter is, is, is a scalable principle. So you can use it for medium voltage or up to high, high voltage. Uh, it is a compact and modular, let's say, B-filar pancake winding design that you can see in this picture up here. Uh, and so you can stack in series and in parallel to uh, build the voltage you need and the current you need. So then they go in the, tri the cryostat and then they will be integrated with a mechanical breaker for a full current interruption as well. So the complete device for limitation and full current uh, braking is compatible with the gas insulated switch gear uh, configuration. My colleagues at, at the Institute have shared with the with me this illustrative, illustrative layout, 3D layout, and how the device uh, would look like. The uh, limiter uh, cryostat is in yellow here, so the meter uh, and, the, and, the, and the DC breaker in, in red. So the limiter allows the DC breaker to be reduced in size. And so the overall design is very compact and which uh, will be great, a great advantage for integrating it in, inside an offshore platform. So such device would be installed in a multi-terminal DC system like in this uh, figure. So in this example, we, we focus on a DC system connecting four, for example, four AC-DC converters, MMC converters, and it uses four cables to interconnect them. So we are going to need eight pairs of SFCL superconducting limiter and DC breaker, two per each line end. So we implementing, we're implementing here this, the selective strategy, protection strategy. And then a fault, uh, let's say the system is a 525 uh, kilovolt DC rated and uh, two kilo ampere. So uh, say, uh, we will perform a fault simulation here, allowing us to validate the EMT modeling of the limiter, which we've done in-house, and uh, verify its natural selectivity and the possibility to avoid the blocking converters, avoid blocking the converters for a continuous operation of the system. So these are the results. Natural selectivity is observed. If you look at the voltage across the eight LSFCLs in the system, 
as you can see, only two of them uh, located around the faulty cable, which is a cable between terminals one and four, will develop the system voltage. If we look at the currents, you can see a fast fault clearance in less than 10 milliseconds. Uh, and the fault current peak values that are reduced, allowing the system to recover a stable operation with one less element in minus one, minus one operation uh, in less than 30 milliseconds after the fault. And finally, grid voltages show also that the system suffers from less voltage stress, which can, can be really advantageous to increase the life span of uh, cables and converters, which can have a great impact on the system economics and uh, life cycle cost. So my colleagues also shared with me uh, conducted preliminary CAPEX studies with the very interesting results. So one of the key factors that uh, set these technologies apart is the total, I'm comparing here the DC breakers actually, so the hybrid one in the, in the right side, mechanical breaker, with classical DC reactor, uh, mechanical breaker in GIS with the SFCL and mechanical breaker in air insulation with SFCL. So the main uh, differentiating factor is the surface area. So uh, compared to mechanical DC breaker solution, the hybrid DC breaker will require 25% more surface in the platform. And on the contrary, when we compare to the same technology, the combination of a mechanical breaker plus SFCL, it reduces by a massive 40% when uh, using GIS encapsulation. So this translates into a total capex of 20% uh, lower for the SFCL plus mechanical breaker solution. So this is definitely a solution that needs to be considered in future of sure uh, HVDC grids protection. Yeah, now I'm going to wrap up my presentation. So uh, let's say uh, the novelty of MTDC networks uh, creates uh, somehow a fuzzy area between tendering and design stages <clears throat> where TSOs need to pre-design the system to well specify. So vendors must provide innovative solutions to improve the security of the system now. The uh, <clears throat> DC protection is new, so innovations are needed and we need to uh, be together collaborating with an adequate framework for sharing data and co-develop uh, the new technology <clears throat> to follow the ambition of the TSOs and, and let's say soon maybe political ambition in, in Europe. So it is highly probable that selective strategies are the first to be tested in the first MTDC system. Uh, they require new performance algorithms though, and the breakers to be ready. So this will be maybe the focus, the main focus on the protection now. Cost effectiveness of DC breakers are to be proven yet. We have different technologies and we start to to get a better knowledge from the cost effective, effectiveness of each one of these. Of them. And there is an opportunity of uh, having a performance of fail safe uh, superconducting foil current limiter to make, uh, to demonstrate the these performances. This is a project that I will talk later that is called Scarlet. And uh, there was another project also in the past called the Fast Grid. So this is really interesting technology to, to dig in. So perspective uh, today, so as uh, Bruno mentioned before, mentioned before, and you may uh, make an idea on this now, where Supergrid is very involved in, involved in many projects today. So it will be DC wise, which will uh, study the impact of the multi-terminal system, system embedded in, a, in, a, in an AC network. So this is more of an onshore system, but also concerns offshore. Interopera project and ready for DC, which are more focused on multi vendor aspects of DC networks. Offshore energy hubs and network DC, which is our focus on the development of the northern sea, northern part of Europe DC grids, and the Scarlet that is focused in superconducting technology. So uh, let, I, I would say at last, let's work together to pave the way for a clean and sustainable energy future through MTDC grids. 
So here at Supergrid, we can focus on different system aspects like the system architecture, system pre-design, uh, control protection design, and system studies through uh, simulations using a variety of variety of tools. So thank you very much. And uh, now uh, I'm open to any questions you may have. I would be glad to 